anime is filled with many character archetypes, and one of the most popular of these archetypes is the Sundere. For those of you that don't know, a Sundere is a person who is initially cold, or sometimes even hostile towards someone, before gradually becoming more friendly and warmer towards them over time. The word Su meaning harsh, and the word Dere meaning sweet. Sundere's are typically female, and more often than not, the love interest of the main character. One of the tropes that comes along with this archetype is that the female lead will physically abuse the main character for comedic purposes, and it will be displayed in a comedic manner. They will also usually have moments of being quite cruel to said character in the beginning of the story, usually being unaware or flat out ignoring the obvious and the romantic feelings said character had for them. But I'd like to start off by talking about one of the more well-known Sundades in anime. <laughs> Sakura is arguably the most hated character in the entire Naruto franchise. I could go a step further to say she's one of the most hated female leads in modern mainstream shonen. And while there are many factors that contribute towards that, I want to take a look on how she fails as a Sundere. First of all, we need to establish that her not ending up with Naruto had nothing to do with this discussion. Her not ending up with Naruto had nothing to do with her being a failure as a Sundere. The first thing I would like to bring up is the violence gag. Anime and manga had depicted Sundere physically abusing other characters for decades, and over the years, the gag had become more and more dull and more and more frustrating for viewers to watch. It is also very easy to execute the scenes improperly and make it appear to be actual abuse and make the character seem unlikable. The whole dynamic of the main character's love interest initially not liking them and being physically and verbally abusive of them and then slowly growing to love them and getting old. But it can still work if done correctly, but Sakura wasn't done correctly. And why is that? Because Sakura is a perfect example of a much larger problem in the industry. These Sundere's are Sundere's for no reason. There was never any real reason for Sakura to be hitting Naruto and physically abusing him. Yes, the scenes are comedy, but there's no real reason for that joke to be in the manga or the anime. Because it's never explained why Sakura would go around thinking it's okay to beat the hell out of people, aside from the fact that it is comedy. And yes, while it doesn't make her an abusive character, it does hurt the audience's enjoyment because the gag is getting more and more old and dull and it is incredibly frustrating. You could remove all the scenes of Sakura punching Naruto from the story and it wouldn't change the overall narrative in the slightest. We are never given a reason to understand why Sakura is a Sundere. She's just a Sundere because Kishimoto made her one. And that is the problem with many Sundere's in anime today. Most of them are Sundere's just to be Sundere. There's nothing separating them from each other because they all do the same thing. They get embarrassed by the romantic interest, so they beat him, laugh her up a little bit for some comedy. None of these characters are bad, but it's much harder to like somebody when they're constantly beating people up and the audience doesn't know why. But Sundere can be done well. Enter Akka Langley Asuka is without a doubt my favorite character in Neon Genesis Evangelion, and she happens to be a Sundere, but unlike other characters like Sagra, it works so damn well. Asuka being a Sundere is a perfectly realistic outcome of the life she has had up until the point we meet her in Evangelion Episode 8. When Asuka was young, the maternal aspects of her mother's soul were fused with Ava and Unit 2. Asuka didn't lose her mother, but her mother wasn't able to show her a single form of love. However, due to her mother being alive and just not caring about her, this results in Asuka feeling a need to prove herself. At first, she just wants to prove herself to her mother, but then this changes and she wants to prove herself to the entire world. However, this eventually develops into a need to be in the spotlight all the time and she desperately desires to be the best. In fact, I would go as far as to say she needs to be the best to be happy. And due to being in the spotlight and being the best, she is able to get her hand on some sort of affection, but it's not real. However, whenever someone like Shinji truly tries to get close to her and give her real true affection, she pushes them away 
and acts incredibly obnoxious and rude and even resorts to physical violence. But she pretends not to have bothered her, putting up a fake macho act. Without going into too much into a deep analysis of Shinji's entire character, Shinji represents everything Asuka hates. Shinji nearly suffered the exact same childhood tragedy that she did, but he copes with it very differently. On one hand, Asuka and Shinji are probably the two characters in the show that are the most capable of understanding one another and have the best chance at happiness together. In fact, I don't think there's any other two characters in the show that if were together in an actual relationship would be happier than the two of them. But both of them are so psychologically jammed by their childhood and lack so many basic communication skills, this is impossible. But there's also the fact that Shinji represents everything Asuka hates and all of her personal flaws. Shinji is the ultimate representation of the personal flaws that Asuka wants to escape, and she hates him for it. But she is in love with him to some degree, but she isn't able to tell the difference between the side that she's in love with and the side that she hates. Being in love with Shinji terrifies Asuka because it would mean accepting her personal flaws she's been trying to escape. This combined with the trauma she went through as a child due to the situation with her mother and the trauma that comes along with being a pilot of the Ava makes it perfectly reasonable for Asuka to have Sundere tendency. Just like all other Sundere, there are scenes where she will slap Shinji and comedy scenes where she abuses him verbally. But the scene where she acts like this makes so much sense within the confines of her character. Asuka is in a Sundere for the sake of being a Sundere. She's a Sundere because that's how her character would realistically act based on her backstory. This allows the comedy scenes I mentioned earlier where she hits people and abuses them verbally and physically to have a layer of nuance to them that other theories just don't have. There are even scenes where the scenes that would traditionally be gag scenes are not portrayed like that and some of her attacks and insults are depicted with a sense of malice in them. The viewer is able to wonder, would Asuka still be like this if not for everything that happened to her in the past? The problem with a lot of Sundere's nowadays is they're just Sundere's for the sake of being Sundere. Going back to the example of Sakura Haruno, Sakura is one of many Sundere's who are a Sundere and while they are great characters, they don't really do anything with the archetype. The jokes and cliches that come with it are old and people are really sick of seeing them. There are plenty of reasons people dislike Sakura. Her being a Sundere isn't really one of them. But there's no doubt that they are sick of seeing the Sundere cliches emanating off of her. The Sundere archetype has tremendous potential and there are so many stories and character arcs that can be told with it. But if people are going to write a Sundere, it needs to be new deep and fresh and complex and different. Asuka is so popular because she's such a typical Sundere, but she's handled so well and done so differently that it's an amazing breath of fresh air. I am by no means saying I expect to see a character like Asuka in a Shonen Jump title. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Evangelion is well, uh, Evangelion. It's a very adult theory, so the point I've been trying to make in this video is that writing a Sundere differently and doing something new, different, and fresh with them will make them 10 times more likable and 10 times more interesting. Especially if you tie their Sundere tendencies into their backstory like we saw in Neon Genesis Evangelion with Asuka. We just need writers to try new things and do a better job when writing their Sundere. There's tremendous potential with the tendency the characters have. Use it. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. Subscribe for more videos like this. I may in the future be doing a video on the infamous hospital scene from End of Evangelion. Follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day.